compact hot hatches still to this day remain an enthusiast's car enthusiast phenomenon. In fact, a few decades ago, every self-respecting automaker from every continent had at least one offering in this format. Sadly, in North America in the last 10, 12 years, give or take, maybe even 15, most in North America have pulled out of the game. Yes, at one point or another, we had a Mazda Speed 3. There was a short-lived STI hatchback. Um, we have always had the GTI. Thank you. There was a Golf R in there, which the U.S. got before we did. Uh, I'm going to come back on that U.S.-Canada thing in a few moments. <laughs> um, yeah, and then there's the today's Civic Type R, which we absolutely love. Uh, and then just recently, Benz has decided to grace us. In this case, I'm sorry, AMG has decided to grace us with... A car that, well, is just plain fantastic. If you like this type of car, compact, tight, personal, intimate, quick, noisy, raspy, not quite refined type of automobile, this could serve as your current poster boy for the segment. It's got all wheel drive, it's turbocharged, it's got a dual clutch transmission, and it's got a lot of tech. And it's fantastic. Oh, and by the way, it's not available in the US. I had to say it. I have to say it. Canada, Mercedes Benz Canada, for some reason, decided to bring this to us. And for that, we are absolutely thankful. And as long as you keep this here, Benz Canada, I'm speaking to, we might, I won't, but we might forgive the fact that you've decided not to bring the new W206 C-Class wagon back to Canada, which wasn't available in W205, generation available in the US. Now I'm going on and on as I always do. Um, but in this video, we are going to get intimate with this brand new 2021 Mercedes AMG A35 hatchbacks. Hatchback, there's just one, so <laughs> this one. And um, I'm pretty sure once we're done walking around it, take it for a spin, that you'll agree with me that this is a pretty fantastic car. In fact, it only has one real flaw, and that's the competition in relation to its price. More on that right now. Okay, so there is such a thing as the Mercedes-Benz A220 sedan available in both Canada and the US. And look, I'm going to bring it up again because look, Canada seldomly wins, ever, never wins anything anymore. Um, so we have the A250 hatchback, which is not available in the US. And it starts at the $39,900. Now, the 2021 A35 hatchback starts at $49,800. So look, between you and I, this is a $50,000 car to start. Now, that's what I was trying to say just moments ago, the issue, because there are other hatchbacks, hot ones, uh, new, slightly used, that are, well, that will never back down from a challenge against this car. The only real difference might be um, the branding, if you will. Now, what do you get for that kind of money? Well, you get the twin 10 and a quarter inch screens. I'll show that to you on the inside. MBUX, the power front seats with memory, and uh, a bunch of visual highlights because this is in fact an AMG, starting with the 18 inch wheels, which are the standard ones. There are 19s available as well. A slightly more aggressive front fascia. You got that splitter down at the bottom, the badging, the skirts. Uh, there's a little bit of a spoiler right there and you have the rear diffuser and sadly as with all AMG light cars fake tailpipes Well, my car has but one option which I find extremely cool and that's the premium package because you have to pay extra some 
3,000 plus dollars if you want Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but it also includes a Burmester, Burmeister audio system. So the car you're looking at right here, grand total, $53,000. My biggest complaint has nothing to do with the 18 inch wheels because there are 19s available. It's that it's black. Why black? So boring. So uninspired, especially when you can get this car in yellow. There's a cool denim blue and a red available. Anyway, it's black. It's not my car. Uh, let's do the quick tour as per the usual. So here Ben says you're looking at 370 liters of boot space. I absolutely believe it. In fact, I think that there's even more space than that. There's a good depth, very decent height, very wide opening. I'm doing this for my American friends that will never see one of these plated with a, a US state plate. So there was no storage under the floor. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Um, so as we get in, so these are available seats. This is the no cost option with the red stitching. It's actually quite nice in here. It is snug. Suede on the door handle, uh, door cards. Very, very nice. Getting in and out is wonderful. You got plenty of leg room. This is a compact car. That's my driving position. There you go. You can see kind of, look at that steering wheel, the vents. Oh, it's, I mean, these are things that you won't see in maybe lesser cars, but um, you might be able to slip three across. Headroom isn't all that bad, despite, and I do, you know, like, I mean, there's a solid inch and a half maybe. And uh, getting in and out ain't that bad. Good size opening. All right. Oh, so. This is obviously where you want to sit. These are very, very nice seats. And there's your power settings with memory and the seats are heated. Again, uh, the red stitching is almost a must. Uh, a must. So uh, let's just slide right in. And this maybe is what differentiates this car from say the Civic Type R, which has a semi horrible dashboard, but everything else about the car is exceptional. Um, Anyway, so I'll turn the volume down. So you can see a fully configurable uh, display there. And here's your uh, infotainment. You got, I don't want to even say, I don't want to say it, but there's the Hey MB, you know, whatever. And it responds to your requests. These vents are among the absolute coolest available. Uh, and the same goes for the steering wheel. I don't know if you can see it all there with this angle, but uh, flat bottom, a nice reminder of what it is you're driving lovely paddles um well, I, i'm not gonna go through the whole menu but everything works apple carplay works really well i love these hvac uh, uh, controls down here storage is fine the, the dashboard has great styling to it like a two-tier setup it's beautiful visibility is actually quite good too as you come around the eight pillars are fairly thin and despite the plaque here you can see quite well over that but my friends that's not really important because now we want to go for a drive i sincerely just can't get enough driving this car it is it is as good as i could have ever hoped it to be but I keep coming back to the price and the competition. Now, even to this day, despite the fact that you can't buy a new one anymore, the Mark 7 Golf R is the most well-rounded, daily drivable, high-performance, uh, well-sorted compact hot hatch you can buy with your money. Now it's too late to buy a new one. I mean, they're still available. There are loads of them available used. Even for an 18 or a 19, you're gonna spend between 35 and $40,000. Yes, $40,000. For a car that was brand new, 42 or 43. Uh, but there's a very, very big difference. One significant difference between those two cars. And I'm not talking about the Mark 8, which is promising to be quite an unbelievable car. But yes, the Mark 7. This car is a little bit harsher. Not exactly as polished, but it's part of its personality, so it's okay. But the Golf R has always demonstrated, even the R32 before that, that you can be a civilized young car and not have to punish in any way, shape, or form. 
there would be a way to possibly improve on that on this car and that's by taking the AMG driver package which includes the three-way adjustable dampers you do get 19 inch wheels with that package though so that would kind of offset what the 18s give you because the ride is still decently comfortable so you get the dampers you improve that but you get the 19s you lose sidewall and you pay for that I suppose but if you do get the package then right you're adding another two thousand or twenty five hundred dollars to the price tag of this thing so your a35 has now become a fifty five thousand dollar car now the other one is the Civic Type R and I kind of touched on you know the inside where this is on another level compared to the Civic but performance wise on paper, the only downside to the Type R is that it's front wheel drive. But on a track where it really matters, when you're driving hard, there is no difference. And it is also $42-ish thousand dollars. But what you do get for your fifty to fifty-five thousand dollars is still well, this isn't exactly an advantage. I mean, the turbocharged AMG enhanced turbocharged two-liter four-cylinder engine, which which produces a lovely, lovely, lovely 302 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 295 pound-feet of torque from 3,000 to 4,000 RPM, which are almost exactly identical to the Type R's numbers. Uh, Type R and the Golf R are quick, but this thing, rated at 4.7 seconds for 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, the road is, well, you can see. Uh, it's bad. Uh, it does, this car feels faster than a 0 to 100 kilometer per hour in 4.7 seconds. There's something about the responsiveness of the entire powertrain. It has to be in the right drive mode. However, uh, seven speed dual clutch transmission. So, this is the only transmission available compared to, say, this manual in, in Type R and the available manual and DSG in the Golf R. Uh, but, you know, that's as we already know and have known for a long time, that is definitely not a downside. This transmission is fast, it just loves, loves to kick up revs, it'll hold them, you can use the paddles. It is beautifully responsive but I did mention that this responsiveness is all to do with the drive modes now the uh, through the dynamic drive select here uh, there is slippery which I, I don't know whatever uh, you start off in comfort and that's where you get kind of an eco drive mode dullness dialed into everything the responses so if you're driving you know, on the highway right now and I want to kick it, change lane quickly, or even just start from a stop sign or, or a traffic light, there is an immense amount of delay, a very long delay, which is ultimately very frustrating if you want to get things going quickly. There is sport, which will fix all that, but it's, it's just a, you know, it's a 12 out of a 10. So that's why you set up your individual drive mode as I have and you go and set it up as such. Here we go, you got the drive, you want it in sport, not dynamic. Your transmission, you want it in drive, not manual, you can always use the paddles, or just use the button down here. And the overall dynamics, just in basic. And you have yourself a car that is smile-inducing, quick, sharp, actually sounds pretty good. Um, digitally enhanced or not, it doesn't matter, it's, it's got a great four-cylinder buzz to it with just enough throatiness to it that you kind of get, you know, sucked into the experience, which is fantastic. Steering is really nice. It's fairly heavy, and when it's loaded, it feels, I don't know, it's dialed in perfectly. However, if you're going in a straight line and you do want to do like a quick lane change when it's not loaded, say in neutral, there is a little bit of a gap. You get over that fairly quickly. 
Uh, it, the brakes are fantastic. Now this car actually has four piston calipers up front, larger discs, um, and the dynamics, just, just the dynamics of it all as a whole, everything up front has been reinforced for the extra power, for sharper turning, just for a more dynamic driving experience. In fact, the front end on this thing is 20 millimeters wider overall than in the rear. So that gives you an idea of what this car is all about. And that's why the turning and the way the front end responds, responds to you know, almost everything you give it is just so good. Now about that word intimate, I feel so connected to everything this car does. It speaks to me. You have to be in the right mindset, which is slightly different from the Golf R, where it just does what it was engineered to do no matter what. This one, you gotta be in tune with it. But once you are in tune, oh my goodness, is it good. It just, it's just fantastic. I absolutely love this car. Over a Type R, over a used 2019 Golf R, over even an upcoming MK8 Golf R. If this thing was five, six grand cheaper, maybe. It's nice, I love vents, I love, love everything about the car, but it doesn't give you that extra fizzes that you might want out of this type of car. Yes, you get that. Yes, you get this. But it's not six, eight thousand dollars worth of that. I still love this car though. Oh my goodness, I love it.